In this video, I'm going to show you how I hacked the cheap LED panel from AliExpress into portable smart lights for video and home use. By the end, we'll be able to control it via Home Assistant and its automations. First, I designed and 3D printed a bracket to hold all the electronics, which will be attached to the back of the panel, as you'll see later. The LED panel is a 15 watt model I bought from AliExpress. It's powered by USB and contains two color LEDs, warm white and cool white. The back claims it draws 2 amps at 5 volts, which is only 10 watts, not 15, but since we're hacking it, the power output will change anyway. Brightness and color temperature are normally controlled by two buttons on the USB cable, but we're about to change that. This is the inside. You can see the LEDs are labeled A and B according to the color. In the top right, we see the three cables that control the panel. The two LED series are connected with a common anode, meaning the red wire is 5 volts, the white wire is cathode for the cool white LEDs, and the black wire is the cathode for the warm white LEDs. Later, we control these cathodes using MOSFET transistors. Now, let's assemble the power electronics. This device will be powered by Parkside 20V tool batteries because I have a few on hand. Tool batteries are a great power source for many projects. They hold a lot of charge, they can deliver high power when needed, and are built like tanks to withstand tough working environments. For this build, I designed a custom adapter to attach to the backside battery, connecting to its terminals using standard 6.3mm male spade connectors. I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but spade connectors are reliable and easy to assemble. You just need a crimping tool and a pair of pliers. However, I didn't do a great job initially, as the multimeter isn't showing any voltage. Ok, the red one is the culprit, so I'll crimp it again. Now we see the expected 20 volts. Next, we need to step down this voltage to around 5 volts, which is what the panel expects. We'll do that with this back converter. First, we secure it to the mount. Then, we solder the battery cables to its input, test that it's working, solder two other cables to its output, and adjust it to around 6 to 6.5 volts. For the control electronics, I'm using my dual MOSFET control module, which I call the THORN. It's part of my SprigStack ecosystem, which includes several similar modules that attach to my Sprig C3, a custom ESP32 module I designed, optimized for battery-powered Arduino projects. The Sprig board attaches onto the THORN like this. On the back, you can see the connections. Three screw terminals, one for power input and two for the MOSFETs. The module can accept a 5 to 30 volt input and control loads of up to 10 amps on each MOSFET. We'll connect the back converter's output to its input and the two cathodes from the LED panel to the negative side of each MOSFET screw terminal. Now it's time to cut the panel's original USB cable, crimp its three conductors and connect them to the electronics board. Then we screw the 3D printed bracket onto the panel using its existing holes. With that, we are ready to program our microcontroller. For this build, I chose to control the LED panel using the Home Assistant platform. 
we go to the ESP Home plugin in Home Assistant and add a new ESP32 C3 device. After following the instructions to install the device, we're ready to write our custom code for controlling the LEDs. In the configuration code, I'm setting the two MOSFET pins as outputs, then I'm using ESP Home's light configuration with a monochromatic platform for both output pins. You can get this configuration code from my GitHub repo, which is linked in the description below. Note that both of my products are open source, so you can get the schematics and design files and modify them as you like. Links for everything are in the description. You can also purchase both my ESP32 board and the dual MOSFET controller from my stores, also linked below. This helps me support my passion for electronics projects like this one and continue building and evolving my hardware ecosystem. I've also uploaded a complete tutorial for this project on Instructables, which is linked below as well. The final step, as you can see here, is to add our programmed board to Home Assistant devices, just like you would with any other newly discovered device. From there, we can create two nice looking buttons on our homepage to control the brightness of each LED color independently. That's it for this project. Thanks for watching.